Welcome to 4.3 Forbidden's video tutorial on AutoIT scripting, part 12. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over some of the other tools that are included with AutoIT, other than AutoIT itself and the editor. First, we're going to start with compiling a script from its script form into an executable form, so that even if somebody doesn't have AutoIT installed, they can still use it on a separate computer. The program that does this is called AUT2EXE. Let's open it up and have a look. Here's the window, AUT to EXE version 3, AutoIT script to executable converter. First, we need to choose the source, which is the AU3 file. We'll do the client first. We do the destination. Set an icon if we want, which is an ICO file, but for now we're just going to use the default. We choose some compression, which is which has the options of lowest, low, normal, high, and highest, and then a UPX compress executable stub. Then that's it. We're going to do the best compression right now. First off, let me say quickly that the client that we're compiling is the TCP client that we were looking at earlier in tutorials 11 and 11.1. .1. When you're done, just hit convert, and at the bottom you'll see the status. Compressing stub executable with upx.exe. It said adding the master script, and then it's done. It says conversion complete. When it's done, if you go into the script directory, there it is. A wonderful little executable. It's usually about 284 kilobytes in size if you compress it 100%. Let's try doing the lowest compression and not doing the UPX compress executable stub. It goes much quicker. It's already done. But the resulting file is now 599 kilobytes, rather than the 200 and something that it was before. We'll just recompress it and do the best compression. We also have the option to do it in 64-bit and a console, which is quite nice. The console it just does it, but it opens up a command line before it does it. Alright, now let's do the server. Alright, now we're all done. If you look in the directory that we compiled the ex the scripts, we have the client and the server. And if we run them, first the server, and then the client, it all works exactly the same. There is a nice macro in AutoIT, which is very useful. It's at compiled. It returns one if the script is a compiled executable, otherwise returns zero. It's very nice if, say, you want to extract a file from the executable, but you don't want to do it if it's compiled. It's a great tool to use. Also, there is a very nice function that you can use in AutoIT called File Install. It includes and installs a file with the compiled script once it's compiled. It's very nice to, if you have, say, an icon for your GUI, or a picture in the GUI, or a file that you want to install, you can include it so that when the, when the executable is, er, sorry, when the script is compiled, the executable has the file in with it. Just remember to, to delete it when you're done. Alright, let's move on. If you look in the AutoIT directory under C Program Files AutoIT3, there's this file called include. In the beginning of scripts, if you say include and something say GUI constants ex.au3, it pulls them from this folder, the include folder in the AutoIT installation directory. It's kind of interesting to look at all of these. One I like is date. It has lots of functions that allow that give you certain dates. Here's there's a list of all of them. It's a very complicated script 
that not even I can decode. The other directory in the Auto IT installation directory is examples. It has some example scripts set up for you. Here are some normal ones. Then there's a simple and advanced GUIs. And then there's also a help file. When you go into the Auto IT help file, down at the bottom, there's usually a short example script, such as this one right here for the file install function. This is pulled from this folder, the help file folder. If you go to file install, right here, you will see the same script that you saw in the help, right there. If you go into the extras folder, of the Auto IT installation directory. There's one that I like quite a bit. It's called Auto Update IT. Right now I'm not connected to the internet, so it won't work perfect. But it says the current installation details and then the latest public release and the latest beta release. So it can tell you if you need to update. There's also something called a version 2 to a version 3 converter. What this will do is it will convert your Auto IT version 2 scripts, which is a previous version, into your Auto IT version 3 scripts. Since these tutorials are intended for people who don't even know about Auto IT other than the fact that it exists, I don't expect that you would have any version 2 scripts, but if you do, that's a great tool. Another folder is icons. It just has some nice icons that you can choose for your compiled Auto IT script. Usually I like to use something else that makes it look like it's mine, but they're still cool to use. There's another very useful tool. It's called AU3Info. What it does is it gives you information about the window that you're in. The title, the class, the class, the instance, and then a lot of other things, such as the position, the size, the style, the handle, and then quite a few other things. The text, the position size, things we already saw, some of the visible text that's in the window, some of the hidden text, the status bar, the mouse, which is the position of the mouse in the window, and the color that is directly under the mouse. The color that it gets in the AU Auto IT window info is in hex. You can convert it to decimal that will give you an RGB value using the function in the Auto IT help directory, or sorry, the Auto IT help file. Some of the other tools include a nice summary about the entire thing. You can also do the finder tool, which will show you certain sections of the window and the information about it. Oh, one more thing about it. It has this nice uh, shortcut called Control-Alt-F, which will freeze it. If you want to get information, say, about a certain color in the window, say, right there, but, you don't, but if you move the mouse to record it, you'll lose it, because you'll move the mouse and the color will change. You just do Control-Alt-F, and it freezes it. So you can go over here and copy it and paste it into whatever script you like. I'm almost over YouTube's 10 minute limit for videos. So in the next tutorial, tutorial 12.1, I'll go over some of the features that are included in the full version of SCITE. They are all very useful. All right, this is 403 Forbidden, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.